and we're gonna climb climb up to 1,600. Okay. Ah! Whoa! What? It's insane. What is that? It's a slug of some kind. Tell me what you're looking at. I will put. Whoop! <laughs> I will Nino, the, what is that? That's a worm. I will put the phone so you can check the, the size. Oh my. <laughs> Give it a kiss. This is a gusano de tierra. Huh? It's a gusano de tierra, so it's very big. But it doesn't do anything. And for the regular, they're not of this size. No, it's prehistoric. Yeah. Yeah. These are gusanitos de tierra. They, they are. But it's um, no, no, it's a normal gusano. It's an earthworm. And the, yeah, yeah, it's an earthworm. And they don't do anything. They just but this is not normal. No. No, no, it's not normal. Seen <laughs> <like> it's very big. <laughs> Call National Geographic. When I signed up to go to the Roaster Producer Forum, I had my thoughts about what I might expect or what kinds of experiences I would have. I like to think of the giant earthworm I encountered with my cohort as a sort of symbol or metaphor. In my mind, the giant earthworm represents the unforeseen wonder there is to be experienced. When you see something for the first time, for me, that thing I was seeing for the first time was something I've been talking about on the show for a while, but have never experienced to this degree. It was this relationship coffee experience like I'd never seen before. This is going to be sort of a personal account of my experiences in Guatemala last May. But first, let me introduce you to a few people. I'm Nino Tucel. I'm a roaster in Barcelona, Spain for Tucel Tostadores. I came here to meet producers uh, and learn a little bit more of the coffee from Guatemala. It's been amazing. I haven't had contact with the varieties grown here at the farm and really excited to, to try the coffee. Plants look really healthy. The shape of the farm looks really healthy too. Uh, also impressed by the... Uh, uh, all the other trees that they grow inside of the farm to create shade for the uh, for the coffee trees. That's really, really cool also. Um, so we're here for the Producers and Roasters Forum. We're just trying to connect in a, in a more real way or as closely as we can with coffee and where it's coming from. It's just really cool to see the, the day-to-day and like kind of experience what coffee production is like firsthand. You know, it's, it's really nice for us because we want to be able to kind of share this experience with people that come into our cafe or that come in contact with our company, however it is. So for us, I mean, the closer that we can get, the more time that we can spend on farms like Yvonne's, the better and more complete story we can tell. I think we were really just trying to figure out what we can do to kind of help them. Buying coffee is more than just like an exchange of coffee and money. And I know that they can sell coffee to whoever, we can buy coffee from whoever, but if there's a a way to build a more real relationship and make the coffee selling side of business easier or better in any way, then I would love to hear about that. You know, so that's kind of what we're trying to take away. My name is Maria Guzman. I'm with Tucel Tostadores, coffee roasting company in Barcelona. And from this event, I hope to be able to really learn more how we as a uh, you know, coffee roasters can actually work better with the producers at Origin just because um, there is a huge gap there that I think that also consumers can be a part of. Well, first of all, learning more about coffee production. And then second of all, how can we make uh, better relationships with the producers at Origin? My name is Hugo. My wife and I, uh, we own a coffee shop and a just newly started roastery. And we came for the Roaster and Producer Forum just to make contact with producers, um, share experiences and get to know them better and their work better. I think every, every single minute of any experience that we can share with some other colleagues, um, coffee professionals, um, and just the people around will enrich our experiences, our knowledge, and so on. All right, Corey, uh, hey. what are you doing right now? I am brewing some coffee on a farm. You're brewing coffee on a farm? Whose coffee are you brewing? I am brewing our coffee, Little Owl Coffee. It's a natural Burundi. I hope to make a better connection with everyone through the whole chain. There's a lot of people from around the world here that I think have a lot of different perspective. And so I'm just hoping to take away 
you know, a new perspective of of our whole industry. My father is the um, my first teacher in the coffee. This farm is the, the, my grandfather's, and uh, this is very important for my father, for me, and my family. Yeah. Each person in my group was out to experience something, not just for the sake of experiencing it, but for the purpose of growing, learning something new, to reach some kind of understanding. Nino was excited to meet producers, learn about Guatemalan coffees, learn varieties. Mike was trying to connect with coffee and where it comes from, experience coffee production firsthand, share experience with customers who drink their coffee, tell a complete story, build relationships. Maria talked about learning how coffee roasters can work better with producers at origin, and she emphasized that consumers are a part of that gap. Hugo was there to connect with producers and to get to know them better. He believed in the enrichment that the experiences bring and the knowledge that can be shared. Corey was hoping for a better connection with everyone through the whole chain. He was hoping to learn new experiences, perspectives, and the whole industry. Yvonne told me the forum is important to her for two reasons. The first reason is pretty straightforward. That is that the forum brings her farms into the light and it's a great marketing exposure opportunity for her farms. The other reason she told me was because it helps to connect two very important hands in the coffee chain, roasters and producers. She said this could provide customers with better prices and better quality if these two hands cooperate and collaborate. If you do the quick relationship math, this is what you get. Nine strangers, not counting Yvonne's family and laborers, meeting for the first time and sleeping in a place most of them had never been before. It's a bit of an intimidating atmosphere at first. Not to mention the pressure Yvonne must have felt hosting eight other people she had never met before. Throw in the mix a few people who don't speak fluent English and a few people who don't speak fluent Spanish, or like me, who... I'm so rusty on my Duolingo, I I was just helpless with my Spanish. Anyway, you have a recipe for a very uncertain outcome. Now, what I'm about to say is an opinion, and definitely romantic, but it was romantic for me. There was something beautiful that happened in this wild environment of strangers. We all had some common ground to stand on. We were all there because in some way, we all love coffee. I don't want to oversimplify the subtle social complexities, but we all had coffee in common. These were all coffee people getting together to learn more about coffee. And that was fertile soil for conversations and relationship building. A sort of more nebulous version of what we talk about on the show as relationship coffee. The morning after our arrival, we all met for a delicious breakfast made by Yvonne's family on the farm. It would not have been complete without some of Abuela's farm-to-table queso, and I mean the cow was like 20 yards away from the breakfast table. This was the day we would gather together and visit our first coffee farm. This was the farm we were staying on, and everyone was getting pretty pumped. This is a new plant. This is how when you're... Oh, wow. Huh? Looks healthy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can't help but note the smile on Yvonne's face and the pride she wore loud and proud as her soiled, trodden boots the pressed plant, forward to lead our group new, of very curious plant, coffee lovers. Because, um, it was an incredible tour as Yvonne the, stopped the here and there to tell us stories. Some included her stories of being a little girl hiking up these same uh, steep hills. They, and man, there were some steep don't. moments. Oh, okay. There is a lot of puffing and puffing in this audio. I just want it to be known I just fell on my butt. The coffee farm was steep, and you really got a good idea of how hard it would be to not only plant the trees up in the steep hills, but also how exhausting it must be to harvest these cherries by hand. It was hard for me, however, not to get distracted by the immense beauty of the surrounding environment.
also the moments when fresh fruit is just hanging above your head, so you have to stop the truck and have a snack. Yvonne is grabbing fruit from the tree. Wait a minute. By the end of the first farm trip, I felt the group was well bonded. We had all experienced an intimate moment with Yvonne and her farm. She shared her coffee knowledge and facts about the farm, of course, but she shared some brief memories of her life on the farm as well. It was now time to take a break and brew some coffee. Little Owl had the hookups, and Yvonne had a newly purchased Chemex and Gram scale. Coffee time. So after a few meals and more conversations, it was time for bed. But we were all looking forward to the next day when we'd be traveling to Yvonne's other farm, except this plantation neighbors an active volcano. This is the reason for the half tree, tree recollector. Okay. Yeah. The first recollection is uh, maybe the, gra- the grain is it's more big. The two recollection is the former recollection, and the tree is the example. This flower don't have the fruits. While I thought the hikes this round looked easier, I think I huff and puffed my way up a lot more than the last finca. So you're definitely going to hear that in the audio. Uh, the age, maybe 30 years cut for the new flower, the new tree. Okay, three yeah. years. Yeah. That's why it has the big trunk. When you step onto this farm, you feel as though you've stepped into prehistoric times. No, this is actually where we saw the giant earthworm that you heard at the beginning of the episode. The atmosphere makes you feel small in a really good way. The interesting part about this farm is not only that the trees are growing in volcanic soil, but also that Yvonne didn't have to use nursery plants on his plantation. She uses the seeds from the thriving coffee plants. Yeah. Wow, so no fertilizer. No, don't use the plants the same to the oh, other. Oh, oh, I see. Only okay. the sweet. Nice, the, uh, so no nursery. Yeah. There was another moment on this hike when Yvonne explained Mommy. the hard work that went into cleaning up the land. She used her neighbor's farm to compare quality. Her neighbor's farm was overgrown and kind of hard to even tell if it was growing coffee, at least from where I was standing. However, she said... This was the way co-ops can work sometimes, which means her beans are sometimes getting mixed with other beans that are not harvested with such attention and quality. When asked if she would consider selling her coffee solo, she essentially told me, well, of course, if I found the right buyer. Makes sense. Okay. Sí. Dale. Bueno. como ellos ya pusieron su plantita en el agujero, o sea, en la orilla. At this moment, we all turned the corner in the coffee farm into a straightaway where we could see laborers working ahead of us. As we got closer, we realized they were planting coffee. Little did we know we were all about to get the chance to plant some coffee ourselves. Lo prensa un poquito aquí para que le caiga las piedras que no se le va a agobiar tanto. Ah, pero, pero primero le echo un poco. Uh-huh. ¿no? Con cariño. Okay. <laughs> Planting coffee doesn't really look that hard. You think to yourself, I'm going to take this hoe shovel and I'm going to knock out some surrounding soil, put the plant in the ground and cover it up in a similar manner. No, it's not easy. For even just one plant in the ground, at least for me, I was completely caught off guard. Now, I'm no Chuck Norris or anything like that, but I was already breathing hard from the hike. I think I even had some major endorphins kicking in my favor because of how excited I was, but I was still huffing and puffing. To think of how much each laborer plants daily during this season is staggering. Your coffee comes from hardworking hands. Enough said. Ahí está, ahí se puede quedar. Ahí está, ahí está. Ahí está.
Vamos, que no, no, no. Se apunta. Okay, Otro que se apunta. Ah, pues. ¿Quién se apunta? Cada quien que agarre. Eh, me gusta la agricultura, me gusta ver la plantación, me gusta la forma de, de los patrones, su forma de trabajar también, y pues me, me gusta la agricultura. Ok, mm -hmm. so basically in general he likes farming, mm -hmm. um, he also likes to see the progress of the farming mm -hmm. since, yeah, since they start until they finish, and that is very important the way that the, the bosses are, so Yvonne and her family, mm -hmm. um, the way they treat them is very important for him, so... Bueno, gracias. Okay. Muchas gracias. Gracias, igual. De Santa Rosa. Ah, de Santa Rosa. Yeah. So, okay. So he just said that he's been working on um, with Yvonne's family for like all generations since his great, pues since his grandfather, her father, and now with yeah. Yvonne. So it's almost all, all no, their de life. Wow. Sí. De veras. Ah, qué bueno. So Tuesday we traversed Yvonne's first farm. Wednesday, we adventured Yvonne's second farm. Wednesday night, it was time to do a cupping of Yvonne's coffees at the mill, way down in Guatemala City. Cue fast, windy truck ride. When we arrived, it was looking like some real rain, so I kept my equipment unplugged. We jump into an introduction of the mill from Scott from Yave. What do you smell? Coffee. <laughs> it's great. Uh, Umberto is going to give, he's the cupping lab manager here, and he's going to give us a small description of what happens um, here on this farm. Where are we? Who is it? And what's the purpose of the cupping today? In no time at all, we are all cupping Yvonne's coffees. These are the coffees from the very farms we just walked together. Yvonne and her mother were in the room. The feeling for me was intense. Can you imagine hosting all these strangers, sharing meals together, and now there are roasters and tasters all together in one room, moving around a table, slurping, and quietly criticizing your coffees? Yep. Intense. If I were Yvonne, I might see this moment as the climax of my time hosting. I've done all I can do to be a great host, and now it's time to let the coffee speak for itself. I saw the pride that Yvonne had the whole trip so far root itself deep inside a serious and curious stare. What are they thinking? Must be running through her head. Do they like my coffee? Yvonne's coffee was tasty. I'm not sure of the quality of the water that was used to brew these cups, but the coffee stood for itself. We all took our notes and that was it. The tension seemed to leave the room at the same rate it entered the room. The cupping session was over, and we were on the tour of the mill. So basically just using flotation, there's a siphon here that pumps water up, um, there's two channels, so some of the denser cherries will sink and those that have defects will start to float. And what you'll see on a lot of the mills is that it's engineered in such a way that, okay, so we started up there, there's a reason we're now down here. It's all gravity based using the, the properties of water, but also what's the coffee gonna do? So the flotation and everything, you can eliminate a lot of processes just by playing to the natural components of what you have. The coffee mill is a critical step in the production of coffee. Depending on the mill, different things may happen. At this particular mill, there was a nursery, beds for drying coffee, both large beds and some raised beds. 
an entire system for depulping and getting the coffee down to parchment. How long have you been working in coffee? Antes de todo, su nombre y su formación en café. Va. Yo me llamo Humberto Monterroso Contreras. Eh, ¿Qué me digo del café? ¿Qué experiencia tienes trabajando café? Pues yo tengo 29 años ya de trabajar lo que es en el café. ¿Y cuántos años tienes? Eh, tengo 40, 44 años. He's been working in coffee for 29 years. He's 44 now. Okay. So basically since 15. Mm -hmm. Sos de Las Verdes. Soy de aquí. He's from de right de here at this town, Los Verdes. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. um, how did you end up working in coffee? Mm -hmm. De ahí me metí ya a trabajar ya en lo que es el, la finca y ya comencé ya a trabajar ya los cafés. Mm -hmm. Pero a mí me, me gustó, me, me gustó lo, trabajar los cafés porque esa era mi profesión. Mm -hmm. Como de pequeño mi papá eso me enseñó. Mm -hmm. so, eh, él, él hacía almácigos uh -huh. y de ahí me inicié yo. Uh -huh. So even as a child, his father was running nurseries, and so at, from his whole life, he's been around the the plant of coffee. Dijiste que cuando cuando saliste de secundaria ya entraste a trabajar café. Sí, así es. So when he left uh, middle school, he was ready to go work in coffee, and that's how it began for him. And from there, it's just he became very passionate about it. He took it uh, as a profession, not as a job. Okay, yeah. And that's where the rest has started to. Excellent. What is your position here at the mill, and what do you like about your job here at the mill? Eh, como entiendo yo, ya has subido por varios puestos en café. Todos los puestos ha Todos pasado. Todos los puestos de, Todos del los fondo. Puestos. <laughs> yo estoy hasta en catación ya, uh -huh. pero sí ha pasado todos los puestos. ¿Me explicas rapidito cuáles eran los, los pasos, cada promoción que... Que lo uh -huh. fui subiendo. Sí. Eh, Primerito eh, me pusieron como de caporal de, de gente, va, eh, pero yo me sentía que no tenía edad porque yo me sentía como patojo todavía, tenía como de 20 años. So he was first in charge of basically like little labor units around, but he was 20 and he got no respect from the guys because they treated him as a kid. Okay. Uh, es que lo, eh, también lo que pasa es que como los encargados fueron viendo que yo era inteligente ¿no? en yeah. el trabajo, entonces me fueron subiendo y subiendo mm -hmm. hasta llegar hasta aquí donde estoy. Yeah, so the bosses saw that he was intelligent, hardworking, and he's continued to climb promotion through promotion. So, me contaste antes que fui, fuiste de caporal de los obreros sí, a sí, ser claro. encargado de los patios, luego el beneficio y, y finalmente encargado de, de la finca. Eh, so y yeah. ahorita ya estoy ya entré a la catación de café. Mm -hmm. ya so, estoy en otro. Yeah, so he went through all the basic ladder rungs that you could do mm -hmm. in a coffee mm -hmm. farm. You went from being in charge of the patio to being in charge of the milling process, then the entire farm, which is, he's still in charge of the entire farm, mm -hmm. and recently got his Q grader, and is now in oh. charge of the cupping lab as well. Wow, very cool, very cool. Si es que legal, a mí lo que me gusta es el café. He loves coffee. Right on. Sí, el café, <laughs> <que más laughs> me yeah, me too. <laughs> At <laughs> uh, 10 p.m., I guess, is, yeah. Well, gracias, thank you. There was a theme for me here that wasn't so obvious to me before. The amount of hands that go into this is unbelievable. I mean, this is all hand-picked in Guatemala. So that's another whole labor force that's not acknowledged usually in the value chain. And then you got guys working 24 hours in here. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like labor in general is not really... Like acknowledged, yeah, in conversation, yeah. in specialty. He said he's 29 years in coffee now. 29. He doesn't look that much older than 29. We talk a lot about hands in the coffee supply chain, but those hands are typically limited to the roaster, importer, exporter, coffee producer. You might even say the consumer, but there's a very important hand being left out of the conversations, and it's as simple as going one more step upstream. The coffee laborer. Right? Duh. More on that in future episodes. For now, I leave it at this. Walking Yvonne's farm and seeing her farm through her eyes, seeing the laborers planting coffee with huge smiles on their faces, seeing Eduardo lead a cupping and talk about his life on the mill, experiencing all these things together with strangers who are now friends, was something unforgettable for me. I told you this would be a personal perspective, and I maintain that angle. 
This was an eye-opening experience for me. And not just because I was at Origin, but because of how I experienced it. More about the forum next week. Thanks for tuning in. And as always, and until next time, happy brewing.